Thanks, hello. Y'all rang, so I came. We're going to talk about Aisha Curry. What does Aisha Curry insecurities and desire for the attention of other men says to and about us? All right, hello, Wendy. Welcome. I'm only on Facebook for this taping. I've been having issues with YouTube, so I'm only on Facebook. Plus, Facebook is my bread and butter. When Facebook call, I come running. Facebook say, how jump? I say, I ask, how high? Calvin, hello, welcome. Kathy, welcome, my darling, welcome. Yes, it's still under the weather, but I just had to come on and talk to you guys a little bit. Oof. Did you guys hear? Um, Bernetta, hi, welcome. Let me invite a few more people. How's everyone doing? Hello, hello, hello. Um... Hello, hello, welcome. Give me a second. I'm inviting a few more lovely ladies. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Kathy's already here. How's everyone doing tonight? Happy uh, Wednesday. Rebecca, hi, welcome, my darling. Welcome, thanks for joining me. Yes, we're going to talk about Aisha Curry and her insecurities and her desires. To have the attention of other men. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, I'm still on the weather a little bit. I'm feeling better, but I'm not 100% myself. Still coughing. I said if I didn't feel better by today, I was going to go to urgent care. I was going to go see my doctor. Um, I'm feeling better, but I said when I wake up, I might just go to urgent care in the morning. Hello, so how many of you guys hear about what Aisha Curry said and what 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 do you guys think about what she said? A lot of people's talking about it. I got a lot of messages about it, what I thought about it. So I figured let me jump on and chit chat a little bit. She says sometimes she wished that, uh, you know, the men's would be looking at her the way other women look at and desire her husband. And um, she says sometimes her husband forgets to introduce her. She's standing there next to him and he just doesn't introduce her. And I've told you guys about <clears throat> that time this woman ran, hi Amanda, welcome, and jumped up on my husband like, Michael, Michael, Michael. Oh, I just came out from outside. I washed my face, but I'm still itching. Michael, Michael. Oh. Michael, Michael. Uh, Amanda, welcome. Regina, Virginia. Hello, welcome. What do you think about what Aisha Kerr said? Oh, my God. I've been in the house for about an hour. I washed my face and everything, but I'm, my face is still itching. Danielle, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for talking about Aisha Curry. What do you think about what she said? And what it meant and what do you think that says to us? Tiffany, hi, welcome. Welcome. What are your thoughts on Aisha Curry? What she said? What do you ladies think about what she said? Let me my uh, oh twenty-eight percent. Allergies, y'all. I don't think I took my allergy pill. <laughs> I didn't even take my pill. What do you ladies think about what um ladies and gents think about what um what Aisha said? How many married ladies are here? You're not tired from your day feel girl, you know I just got home. 
I, I went, I got my call. I said, if I, if I got, came home, I was going to lay down. I went to my job. People's been asking for Michael. So I walked him around for about an hour. Then I had to do blood work down the street. So I went and did blood work. Then I went to get a pliable. Then my husband was on his way home. So I was like, well, I might as well wait for him. He was supposed to come at four. Um, then he said, oh, I'm not, my train is not going to get there until 4.45. So I was like, well, we're already here. So we might as well wait. So I just got home not too long. Okay, I um Aisha Curry was on the red table and she said that um basically that she wished she would get attention from other men. That's not the whole thing, but I'm just that's the easy part. Um, you know, like her husband get a lot of attention from other women and she wished that, you know, she would get the same attention. To me, that part is about competition. She's competing with him. Wives should not ever, ever compete with their husband in no area. Um, and uh, sometimes he forgets to introduce her. He's working on it. He's, she's standing right next to him and he forgets to introduce her. And, um, you know, they've been together 10 years and, you know, and so... So what do you ladies think about, it, especially the married lady? Of course, the people that inbox me are not here. I tag them. I think she's living in a whole nother world. I couldn't even do it. You couldn't do what, Amanda? What couldn't you do? You couldn't say that about, about your husband? The attention that she gets from her spouse should suffice. Apparently, he's not giving it to her, Regina. Apparently, he's not, giving, he's not giving her attention. This is another reason why I am against getting married too, too young. Hi, Taka. Taka. Did I say that right? This is another reason I'm against getting married too, too young. But first of all, they were high school sweethearts. They got married young. You know what it is? She's coming into herself now. This is why I'm against getting married too, too young. Because you get married at young, too, too young. You don't know yourself. You don't know yourself. Right now, how old is she? I don't know. Uh, Danielle, how old is Aisha? Right? You see what she's saying? She's coming into herself now. She's just finally coming into herself. And she's finally realizing at this age what she likes, what she doesn't like, and what she wants. And apparently what she has is not what she wants. That's why I am against. I know many, many couples that got married 18, 19, 20, 21 that are divorced today. Because why? They got about 28, 29. They're like, uh-uh, this is not, uh -uh, not it. They're coming into their own. And my dad always said, I, I wrote it in my new book, uh, as ladies, we have to give boys, guys, time to get the dog out. Oh, yeah. I don't believe you get these boys getting married 19, 20. They're not ready to be no husband, child, please. Are there couples that are still married? Yes, I know a couple right now. Poor thing. He waiting for that boy to turn 18 years old. They got they got married in their mid-20s. Hi, Annette. That's another reason I'm against getting married too, too young, because you don't know yourself. You don't know what you like, and you don't know what you want. He should have conversation about her concern. He can't fix her or just what he doesn't know. Well, apparently she has brought it, brought it to his attention because he said he is trying to work at introducing her more. But I guess he's not there. I shared a story about this woman. I uh, guess she didn't know my husband was married. We was married about a year and... Um, uh, we was married two... One year, but about a year and a half, almost two years, we was at uh, one of my husband's event. I was standing there. I'm going to post the video down here. I want you guys to watch and tell me what you think. And she ran up to my husband. Michael, Michael, she jumped on him. Oh, I've been looking for you all night. And my husband gently removed her hand from around his neck. 
hold her hand, hold my hand and said, this is my wife, Janice. She looked me up and down. She say hi and turned back to my husband and said, so when are you going to come see me? And this is a lady, my husband's been saying, we have to go to this woman's business, place of business to give her some business. It was a small uh, black place of this small business. And uh, he's going to say, we, you know, we need to go to this place. We need to bring them some business. And so, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never got to it. <sighs> Never got to it. And uh, when he came home, you know what I said to him? I said, bring my money down to that place and see what happens. <laughs> he had never mentioned it again so the other day when I was sharing this story um, I told I said you remember he said I don't remember that he was like she did that I was like yeah she did that you don't remember me he was like no I said okay he told no no I said okay how come we've never been we've never brought our business down to that place of business <laughs> Just, he just smiled. Okay. So, and my husband is very good. My husband's in marketing. So, you know, I've never felt, I've never felt, you know, like he doesn't introduce me or anything like that. Um, he can't fix her just what he doesn't know. Uh, she needs to stand on her own feet and not wrap herself all in him. Well, there's Bettina, there's a there's a role that a husband plays in my book on marriage that I need to write, finish writing. There's a role that a husband plays. A husband, this is why I lay single ladies, my single ladies, single ladies dating to be married. This is why we can't just marry just anybody. Okay, my daddy always told me, he said, oof. My father had me to break up with my college sweetheart. You know why? She, he said, you love him too much. You love him more than he loves you. And see, a woman is to never love her man more than she lo more than he loves her. Doesn't mean she doesn't love him. It's just that there is a place where a husband is to love his wife. He is to adore her. He is to treasure her. The problem is a lot of women is doing that part and so when his attention turns somewhere else, then you're left like, well, I don't know what's wrong. You know, many, many wives. You've, you've seen my book, The Naked Wives? The Naked Wives. Many wives are naked because they're not getting the love, the attention, the provision, the protection of their husbands. That's why they're naked. Okay? There's a role a husband has to play in the wife of him of in in the life of his wife. Okay. The relationship between a husband and wife is this is similar to the relationship between Christ and the church. Okay. Christ loves the church. How does he love the church? He died for her. He adores the church. He cherishes the church with his love, with his adoration, with his protection. It's the same way a husband is to be with his wife. And you'll see it right here. He's not doing that for her. That's why she's like, she's craving the attention of another man because her husband, the one that's supposed to be giving her the love and the attention is not doing that for her. If he was loving on her and 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 showing her with attention and, and all of that, she wouldn't be out here talking about, I'm, I crave the, the attention of other men. She's craving the attention of other men because the one man that's supposed to be giving it to her is not giving it to her. And again, getting married at, at such a young age, college sweetheart, forget it, honey, please. You know how many college sweetheart couples, wives out here, I know is so thirsty. I've been, Monday's my, Monday. Monday's my wedding anniversary. Is it Monday? I think it's Monday the 13th. I've been married six years. Anybody. You ask anybody that knows us personally. I don't think anybody's on here that knows my husband and I personally. You, They will tell you. Michael loves and adores Janice. You can see it. The first time I took him to my Christmas party, everybody, you hear me, Janice? He's the one, the way he is with you, the way you was with me. Monday morning, all the women was at my desk. Janice, 
that's the way you better marry him. I remember his grandparents should point my her finger. She said, you better marry him. The way he was with you, that's how my husband is with me. And so there's a love and attention that comes from a, a husband. Okay. For years, the church and people put the burden of the, the, the marriage on the, sh on the breast, on the wife. No, no, no. It's on the shoulder of the husband. There's a lot of, lot of stuff the husband has to do. Okay. But women, we've been fighting and do this. And what's that saying that says about the home? The wife makes the home. What's that? What's that saying? That's a lie. That's a lie. Okay. So there's a there's a big role a husband has to play, okay? Husband is to love her, adore her, cherish her, compliments her, tell her you're per, you're she's pretty, okay? Every time she do her hair, you you compliment her. That's his responsibility. Oh, I love that dress on you. Ooh, I put some pants on yesterday. My husband said, hey, you can't wear those out the house, honey, because your booty in those pants. I was like, really? I took them off. I put something else on, but at least he noticed. Okay. Oh, I need to take my allergy medicine. Annette, hello. Uh, Bettina says she will be very unhappy if she buries herself in him and has no identity, identity of her own. Again, there's a role he plays. There's a role a husband has to play in the in the life of a wife. The same role we play in the lives of our, our children. We adore them and love them and tell them how pretty they are and all of that stuff. A husband has a responsibility too, and so does a wife. A wife has a husband. My husband went and got his hair cut, and they, 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 he went and he did it differently. And he came home kind of late. So I didn't see it until morning. I was like, oh my God, I love that. Oh, you're so handsome. And sometimes I tell him, babe, go well, please go get a, a New York haircut. It's just something about a New York haircut. My husband get his hair cut and shaved in New York. It's just something, child. He come home and I just want to like. <laughs> There's a responsibility that each each spouse play in the life of their mate. Uh, Amanda, not introducing your wife right next to you is just, it's rude. It's, but again, it's that he's a boy. He's a little boy. He's a little, they got married fresh out of high school, child. He's a little boy. You know, I don't know. I don't know about his upbringing or anything like that. He's a boy. He's a little boy. Little boy, child. Don't, don't know. Don't know. And he, you know, he's real soft. He's real soft. She's probably at that point right now. She needs, she needs a man, honey. She need a man. She need a man that's gonna put his hand, his hand right here, right here in the in the back, you know, right here, um, right here where where your the ladies your back go like that, <laughs> and pull her up to him and say, "How you doing, baby? Girl, you look so mm, fine today. That dress." That dress, you know what? Take that dress off. <laughs> she, she's coming into she's she's realizing now that that little puppy love. Uh-uh, she needs something more. That's what that is. That's what that is. Well, she was disrespectful. How was she disrespectful, Regina? I missed that. How was she disrespectful? Hi, Simone. Again, I'm going down the line. I'm a little low. Shaniqua. Hello, welcome, Michelle. Hi, welcome. Hello, I'm going down the line. Regina says they they are going to end up separate if he continues to disrespect her. Yes, there's a role. There's there's a need. Okay, a wife. Ha I, let me tell you, my husband. I get flowers from my husband at least at least once a month. I get flowers. One time he went away for a week. I ain't get no flowers, but I ain't say nothing because I know Valentine's Day was like that next week. So I was like, okay, I, I didn't say anything. Sure, no Valentine's Day, I got my flowers. So he was away a couple of days. So I said, I told him what, you know, what she's, Aisha Kerr said, he said, sound as if she's not happy. He's not making her happy. See, this is what a man is saying. That's what a man is. Saying. I'm gonna call my dad about this tomorrow. So I brought up the whole flower. So I said, 
I said, um, I said something and he said, Oh baby, you get a lot of attention from me. I give you a lot of attention. I give you lots of attention. And I say, yes, yes, you do. So I brought up the whole flower thing. So I say, I say, there was a week you, you went away for a week. I didn't get no flowers. So he said, oh man, they didn't send any flowers today. But I said, no, he was away for a short few days. He went away Sunday night. <coughs> he came home today. So I'm not, you know, usually I'm like, whatever. But whenever he goes away, I get flowers, especially if he goes away for a week. Okay, he sent me flowers. So I was like, no, 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 no. So I said, remember that week you went away? And um, I, sh I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have fixed it for him because I said, but, you know, I didn't worry about it because Valentine's Day was the next week and I got my flowers. I should I shouldn't have fixed it. I should have seen what he had to say. But um, there's a need that wives have, you know, we have a need for him to say, even when I go and get my hair done, you know, say something, you know. I put an address on, say something. My husband is very complimentary. Um, one of the things I loved about him was my dad say, well, you marry a man that adores you. And I remember telling him that I want somebody who is crazy about me. He said, crazy, like crazy, crazy. He was like, you know what's about that's crazy? What's about that's coming? I said, yeah, you're right. But uh, there's a need, because there's a need we have. That's why she needs it from somewhere else because she's not getting... Why do you think Lou girl? Think about Lou girls. Lou girls get go out there. They crave the attention of all these men and stuff because they're not getting getting it from their daddy. Same thing with a wife. She's not getting the love and the attention she needs from her husband. She's gonna crave it from somebody else. Like I was saying, marriage six years Monday. Ain't nobody's attention I need out here because my husband gives it to me. He showers me with love and every day. There's not a day he don't say I love you. Getting off the phone, I love you. Going to bed, I love you. You know what I mean? Because we need that. We crave that. Felicia, hi. If I didn't get to your name, I'll get to you. Amanda, your husband should be your cover. Your husband is your covering. Hello, naked wife, naked wife, naked wife. Your husband is your covering. A husband is to profess his love to you. He is to provide, provide for you, which is also a covering to protect you. Your husband is your covering. We are to submit. Submit means to come under. Your husband is to cover you. Okay. Elva, hello, my darling. Welcome. Amanda, the thirsty wife sounds like a new. <laughs> Ooh, the thirsty wife. Girl, Amanda. Mm. The thirsty. Anita, hello, my darling. Welcome. I'm getting to you, honey. I have three, three comments. So grandma says that a man should love a woman more than she loves him. That's what my daddy said. My dad had me break up with my college sweetheart because she he said, you love that boy too much. Okay. Why you why you think you have these women out here working 10 jobs while he sit at home all day playing, playing video games? Because she loved him too much. You, the, the, the reason a man is to love his wife is because he will do what he needs to do to protect, provide, and profess, okay? Many women out here are doing the professing, the providing, and the protecting because they don't want to lose him, okay? But is that biblical, Janice? Michelle, is what biblical? I have 24 comments. I'm, ch I'm, I'm, um, I'm catching up. Michael, hello, welcome, Elva. But Janice, doesn't it need to be both ways? Yes, it needs to be bo both ways, but Remember, ladies, a man's responsibility in a marriage is different from that of a wife. A, a wife is to respect her husband, is to honor him, respect him. I told you all about my husband. My husband uh, went to school for engineering, right? He's in marketing. And sometimes he showed me his blueprint. It's all little boxes, okay? The, his When he showed me his blueprint, it's all little boxes. Okay. Let's go. He showed me his blueprint. I got to tell you a story about my dad and my husband. He showed me his blueprint. It looks like this. Can y'all see that? Okay. I don't know what I'm looking at. They all look the same to me. But you know what I said? 
Oh, Michael. <laughs> you did all of that. Oh, wow. That is so wonderful. And guess what? Touch on each box. He can tell you. Well, what's going to be here? Oh, that's so-and-so. And here, that's so-and-so. What's going to be over here? Over here, he goes, this so-and-so, this so-and-so right here, and this is this is him. I'm like, oh, wow, you did it. Oh, oh, I'm so proud of you. They all look the same to me. But you don't say that. You don't say, oh, they all look alike to me. You know he's he needs you to, to be proud of him and to scoop. When I go to his events and he's speaking, he's giving a speech, I'm the I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy. <laughs> so my fa my biological father, long story, didn't come to my wedding. He was out of the country. And um one year my husband's conference was in Florida. So my dad came to see the baby. And me, my husband, so my dad told us to meet him outside because he was just passing by. He had on his work clothes. My dad was in construction. So my husband says, no, he can't come out. Tell him to come inside. I said, Mike, daddy has on his work clothes. He doesn't want to come in. He's dirty, you know. So Mike was like, tell him to come inside. So my dad came inside. Here go my husband. Taking him, showing, oh, this is what I do. I was annoyed. So first of all, Florida is hot. I can't stand Florida. I used to live there. It's hot. It's sweaty. And we, um, from the hotel to the conference center was about two, three blocks. We walked because, you know, I have to get my exercise. And so I was just annoyed. The kids was hungry. I'm like, Michael, come on now. We got we to go. We got to go. He was like, no, I got to show your father, you know. Child, he opened the door. It was an empty room. But, you know, he coordinate what, what go what. And I'm looking like, you're showing him an empty room. My father says to me, no. You know, he's just, he just wants me to see his work, you know, man to man. And it clicked in my head. It clicked. It clicked. It clicked. You know, he want to be, you know, this is what I do. This is what I do. You know, this is what I do. So they want to be praised. Men want to be praised and honored and respected. Women want to be adored and showered with praise. Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, your hair, you change your hair color. I changed my hair color one time. I didn't even think he noticed it. Child, he noticed. I was like, you, you, you noticed. He was like, yeah, you changed your hair color. I was like, thank you, baby. Casina, hello, welcome. That's a big part. Amanda says that's a big part of it. it seemed like men don't know their function no they don't but he's young and again i don't know what his upbringing is i don't know if anybody taught him how to be a husband you know show her love her take her out send her when was the last time he sent her flowers? now i heard i don't know how true she's worth it's not about the money i heard she's worth 16 million dollars by herself so they both have money when was the last time he sent her flowers? When was the last time he took her out, just her alone? My husband and I, we go, we do day dates. <clears throat> we don't like leaving the kids. And our anniversary is Monday. And he said he wanted us to go away for the weekend. I'm like, no, because we're going away the end of the month. No. You know what I want to do with my husband? Monday, I might say, I'm obviously going to take the day off. I want breakfast. I want us to go to IHOP because we used to go to IHOP a lot for breakfast when we were dating. Then I want us to go see our marriage counselor. We believe in continual counseling. Married ladies, married folks, continual counseling. Don't just go to, to the counselor when you're married, when you're about to get a divorce. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about the tiny foxes spoil the whole branch. I told you, my grandmother, after 30 years of marriage, got up and divorced her husband. And I asked her, what did you go through after 30 years that... Um, you couldn't stand at 30 years. She said there were always things that were happening that they never fixed. And so she divorced him. She said, I realized if I didn't divorce him, I would end up in the poorhouse. And sure enough, he ended up in the poorhouse. She's still living like the queen of England. She's 95. She just had her 95th birthday. Okay. So we believe, my husband and I believe in continual counseling. Don't just go to the counselor when you're about to get a divorce or when he cheats or when you lie or whatever, or when he, 
go continue to counsel. So we go to our council three, four times a year. The last time we went is December. We were supposed to go last month, but my husband was traveling. So our anniversary is Monday. So Monday, I want breakfast along with my husband. I want to go to IHAP for breakfast. I want to go see our council for about, we usually sit with him for about two hours because, you know, it's only three, four times a year. Um, again, it's just talking. Sometimes it's just, hey, how are you? How are the kids? Yeah, how's work? You know, they sit there. They have a whole conversation. Men have a whole conversation. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. It's just having the the an open door where if there's anything is wrong, you can sit and talk. And, of course, I can go see him. Michael can go see him. And we go see him three or four times a year. So we're going to go on our anniversary to see him and then another three or four times through the year. And then if anything else is wrong, you know, we can each go sit and talk to him. And then may, if he needs to call the other in, then that's what he does. Excuse me. Let me clear my nostrils. I'm sorry. And I have 29 comments. I need to reach up on. I need to check. So doesn't mean this is my hand sanitizer. Anything is wrong. Let me get my hand sanitizer. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. It's just having that open door policy where, because a lot of wives are naked wives and a lot of wives are going through. A lot of wives are feeling the way she's feeling. That's why I'm not mad at her for sharing. Because a lot of wives are feeling that way. One man be married 16 years and he don't got time to go to counseling. So, okay. Keith, hello, my brother Keith. How are you? Uh, Regina says, the woman that grabbed your husband. What about her? I'm going to share the, uh, let me copy it from YouTube. I posted on YouTube. Let me grab it right now. Let me grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. I have my allergy pills right here. I need to just go take it so I can stop it. Ugh. Oh, right here in front of me. Right here in front of me. Um, videos. Let me go. Let me grab that so y'all could um, y'all could watch it. I'm trying to grab that video from Facebook with the woman that grabbed my husband, jumped all over him, all to roll on. My, my beautiful girl. Oh, beautiful, pretty. Look like she's she staying in milk all day. Look like she just got up out the milk to come to the event. And what that says, because I my husband is in marketing. My husband have met a lot of beautiful, and I've seen a lot of beautiful women. Um, and I've, I've asked him a couple of times, oh, she's pretty, why, so on and so forth. He says, it's not just about being pretty. Yeah, he wants somebody pretty, but there were other things that he wanted in a woman, in a wife. Okay, there's the link. Let me share it. I share that. Okay, let me catch up. Lord, I'm so behind. Amanda says she agreed. Christina, hello. Welcome, dear. What you think about what Aisha said? I'm coming. Danielle says, I was driving home from work when I hopped on, but to answer your question, she's 30 years old and he's 31 years. They got married into, yeah. Kids, child. That ain't gonna work. Mm -mm. Cancel that. Cancel that. Jesus name. Mm. My, man, my brother got married at 21, 10 years, divorced. My other brother, divorced. I know a lot of people that got married young. It's just get, getting married because you don't know yourself. That's the thing. 
See, now she's 30. I was telling somebody else that. I don't know if she's on. She's been with her boo-boo since she was like 13. She's about to hit 30. And now she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're coming into your own. You're seeing that's not what you need. That puppy love. That's not what you need, baby. You need you need a man, a real man. You understand? A man man. A man's man. Okay. Elva Fisher said, yes, my husband's coworker told me he never stopped talking about me. That's right. That's right. When I go to my husband's job, I don't have any problems. They all love me. Okay. Everybody that work with my husband, they all love me. Okay. The Tina said they will. They were a little young to get married. I was all, I, I always say 25 is a good age. For, for women, I say about 28, 27, 28. Guys, 35, 40, child. They, they, they're they not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready. Regina, I'm 51, still looking. 50, oh, Regina, we got, we, we, we got to get, get you together, honey. We got to get you to reposition yourself. Jahad Wilson, hello, welcome. Elva, you mean your eyes don't glaze over like my eyes to when my husband talks about his work? Okay, I try not to. Uh, no, I look at it because I know why. I know why. I know why he's doing it. And I'm like, oh, my. Oh, he's so smart. But my husband is smart. My husband is um. My husband is a is a bookie, so I love I love I've always loved smart men. So all of my time wasted going out with the regular dude because the church folks wanted me to was just a waste of my time because I always knew I love smart men. Like if he was not like Obama or uh, Cory Booker type, I, for years Cory Booker was my boyfriend in my head. President Obama, Cory Booker type, I wasn't interested. I can't. Those are the type of guys I like. I've always liked them. So all of my time wasted going out with the average dude was just a waste of my time. Then I got 28. I was like, no, not going to do it no more because I don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like them. So I stopped wasting my time. <laughs> and then I met my boo -boo. Julie, welcome. Hi. Shanita, welcome. Hi. Danielle, I will go as far to say 28 and up if you have your stuff together for, for women. I know someone who got married at 25 and a few months later they had to move in with her mama. Lord Jesus Christ. Why? What was the plan? They had no financial plan? That's a question, single ladies. Ask him. Where's the emergency plan? If you lose your job, what we gonna do? Remember, if he say, I gotta fix my clothes. While you're dating, ladies, ask him, uh, uh, baby, if you lose your job, what's going to happen? Now, let me get my pocketbook because, I, you know, there's, there's three things you have to do. Let me get my pocketbook. Wait a minute. Okay, dating, single ladies now, single ladies. I'm not talking to married ladies, okay? I don't want you to say Jane and say, Mary, if you're listening and you're a married woman, do this, do this. Single ladies, while you're dating, remember the, that list we talk about, questions you need to ask. You're dating, he said, he said, you say so, um, so. Tell me, what happens if you lose your job? What's the emergency plan? If he say, if his emergency plan is unemployment, pick up your pocketbook and do this. <laughs> okay. If you ask him, his, if his emergency plan is unemployment, 
Take up your pocketbook. Okay. If, <laughs> if you ask him and he said his emergency plan, well, if he said something like, well, <laughs> you can hold those down, right? Run, okay? Pay attention. Think of dating ladies. If his emergency plan is you, run for the hills. Run for the hills. <clears throat> a husband is to always have a plan. Okay, he's supposed to plan everything out. Every answer you ask him, he's supposed to answer. Ask him, how long, if you lose your job, how long will it take you to get you another one? You better listen to me. That's what my daddy told me. Okay, that's why she's moving in a few months. Where's the emergency plan? He ain't had no emergency plan, no, no savings, no money saved up. Moving in with her mama, not even his mama, her mama. <clears throat> Selena, hi, welcome. Bettina says she agreed. Christina's laughing. Daryl, welcome. Daniel says, girl, that cracks me up every time you do that. <laughs> what we going to do if you lose your job? You got to ask him. Dee Dee, welcome, my darling. Did I miss anybody, Lord? I hope I didn't miss anybody. Okay. LaShonda, hello, welcome. That was one question I asked my husband. So if you, if, you know, you lost your job or you get sick, you can't go to work, what's the plan? Timothy, hello and welcome. That was one question. If you get sick, you can't go to work, you lost your job, what's the plan? I need to know. And I need to make sure I'm comfortable with it. I, I asked him, I said, you lost your, oh, he said, oh. He said, hmm. I'll email hmm. so, 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 so. I have a next job. I'll have a job in a week. I said, oh, okay. If you get sick, you can't go to work, what's the problem? What we gonna do? He said, oh, so, so, so. Then he said, if anything happened to me and I go before you, this is the plan, this is what you do. Do this, A, do this, B, do this, C. I said, okay, got the plan. When he's not here, he travels, he leave his two frat brother numbers on the refrigerator. Anything happen, call so-and-so, so-and-so, do this, do that. He was going away for a week. I said, oh my God, a whole week, the garbage. He said, don't worry about it. He bought out one of those big containers. Next thing I know, the neighbor is pulling the garbage out. Good. I, shall, I don't need to worry about the garbage. See, a, ladies, a husband is to plan. You're not supposed to worry about nothing, okay? The same way my daughter, my daughter's, most of you know my daughter's 24 and she's especially, she ain't got to worry about nothing. She goes to day program, two day program. I coordinate everything. She needs shoes, me. She need money, me. She need a new phone, me. Where's my thing that says fixer of everything? Where's my thing? I have a thing. I think I might have brought it upstairs like this. Let me see if I find it. I have a thing like this that says fixer of everything. I brought it from my husband. You not a wife is a wife is not supposed to worry about anything. If you have a husband, nothing. How are we gonna pay the rent? Not your problem. 
That's the question you should have asked when you was dating him. How we go eat? Wife shouldn't have to worry about that. Not if you have a husband. When I was a single woman, me and Lexi, I had to, I went to work every day. Sun, shine, snow, sleet, rain, breeze. I was at work saving up my days because why? If anything happened to me, I was responsible for me and Lexi. And if anything happened to me, I had to plan my life out in a way that I can still take care of her. Now, I don't, I don't shouldn't have to worry about that. To be honest. She shouldn't, Aisha Curry should not have to be worrying about the attention of another man or wanting the attention of another man because her husband is to give that to her. And for years, especially in the church, the church has put the responsibility on, and the burden of marriage on the, on the heart and chest of the wife. And it's not supposed to be because the burden and the responsibility of the love, the protection, the adoration of the church is not on the church. It's on Christ. And the marriage is, to, is a representation of the marriage, the relationship. Sorry, guys, my face is just itching because of allergies. Um, the church don't have to worry about anything. What the church got to worry about? Nothing. Christ has already made a way. Christ has already provided. He died. He rose. He love her. He tell her how much he love her. How much he love her. He died. My daddy always, always said a husband is to love his wife like Christ loved the church. And he would say, and how did Christ love the church? And I would say, he died for the church. She needs my book. She sure do. Send her a copy. The Naked Wife. Lots of naked wives out here. A whole lot of naked wives. A whole lot of them. A whole lot. Because their husbands are not covering them. And see, a lot, but also a lot of women marry these men knowing that they can't cover them and then get in the marriage and say, well, I need you to cover me. Well, you went in the marriage covering him just like the one I read the other day. Which one was that? Um, uh, which one I just did the other day? Covering him. Did I read that? No. Ooh, story. Tomorrow never comes. Um, maybe I meant to do that one. I think that probably was my other one. Uh, uh, covering him. I'm going to read that one for y'all. Covering him. She's covering him. Don't marry these men too young because a lot of these men, they need mamas. They're not, they're not ready for no wife. They're looking for mamas. Covering him. Let me find that one. Uh, covering him. Ugh. Ugh, excuse me. Covering him. Uh, covering him. There you go. One sixty three. <laughs> 163, covering him. If you haven't picked up my wife, I think it's on sale on Amazon. I think they got it down to $9.99. Pick it up on Amazon. Covering him. I'll get the link in a minute. My husband was supposed, supposed, my husband was supposed to be my covering, but apparently I was the one covering him. We were sitting in the counselor's office and he was asking him questions. I kept answering for him and making excuses for him. The counselor's asking the husband the question, she's answering for him, like I answer for Lexi when she goes to the doctor. You know, Dr. Paid, well, Dr. I won't say my doctor's name. When the doctor asks her questions, I wait to see if she answers it. And then if she doesn't answer it the way like she told me, then I interject. Well, she said this hurt, that hurt, so and so. You know, and of course I can do that because again, you know, my daughter is uh, classified. So, you know. She can do so much for herself, but whatever she can do for herself, I have to make sure, hi, the Lord, she can do. So the wife kept answering for the husband. 
The counselor turned to me and asked why I continued to make excuses for him. She was making excuses for him. Like he, like she's his mama. He scolded me that my husband acts the way he does because I kept making excuses for him. He doesn't help around the house because he's tired. This is what she says. He doesn't pick up the phone and communicate because he's busy. This is what she says. You know, uh, what, another thing I noticed is a lot of wives, they make excuses for their husband so they could feel good. Oh, he doesn't call or communicate because he's busy. He does a clean up because he's tired and that will make her feel better. Um, he doesn't pick up the phone and communicate because he's busy. Everything I was complaining to the counselor about, I was making excuses for him. So she went to the counselor to, to talk to the counselor about her husband, but everything she's complaining to the counselor about, she's making excuses for the husband. Okay? Instead of him covering and protecting me, I was the one doing the covering and the protecting because I had allowed him not to take responsibility for his actions. Sound like a little boy to me. And he was comfortable with me making excuses for him and covering him. We were college sweethearts and I grew up and matured, but he was still that 19 year old boy I had met in college. 13 years later, he was still the teenager for whom, even though we are the same age, I was going to his professors to beg them not to fail him. I guess I had just taken over from where his mama left off. Yeah, little boy, he didn't grow up yet. I either. Okay, so there it is, a wife covering for her husband. She grew tired. No, she grew up, she's what, 34? And she needs what she's been doing for him and um, realizing that he never grew up. He was still the 19-year-old boy. She picked up from where the mama left off. A lot of wives are doing that. But that's why they are the naked wife. Okay? I think there's another. Isn't there another one in here like that? Ooh. Let's see. I think there's another one in here. Uh, 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 tantrum oh my god that one tantrum child is that the one that she said let's what about the one that says my husband is a toddler my husband is a teenage boy stop marrying toddlers ladies my husband is, yeah, my husband is a teen. My husband is a child, 239. Then I'm going to go and get in bed with my two Michaels. <laughs> my husband is my struggle. My husband is a bachelor. Old man, secret freak, like father, like son, a child. Ugh. A drunk teen, a toddler. Where's the one about tantrum, negotiator, project, child? You don't want no project. You ain't no construction worker. Oh. Which one should I read? I'm going to read uh, toddler. Picture a toddler having a tantrum. That's my husband. When he doesn't get his way, he throws things, falls out, pushing over couches, chairs, practically crying and talking in a baby voice. Oh, my God. Holding his arms, his hands, and pounding. Couldn't be me, child. Couldn't be me. I can't. I, don't, uh -uh. I was so afraid that he will have a tantrum when we are out somewhere that I stopped going anywhere with him. Yes, he had little habits while we were dating. Red flags. He had little habits that we were dating, but we would talk through it. He's not a child, okay? I talk through it with my little four-year-old when we go out. I have to talk through it because he's four. 
Plus, we didn't live together before we got married. And you know the saying, you don't know a person until you live with them. I don't believe in shacking up. I am not, a, okay, advocating shacking up, but something needs to be done so we can know each other, live, how each other live and have and behave under pressure. Oh, five more minutes. I'm going to wash my face again, y'all. It is scary being with a man who behaves like a toddler. He refuses to go to counseling and blames me for causing him to act like that. I knew it was over when we argued and he turned into the Hulk, flipping over, flipping the couch over and walked out. I grabbed our son who was cowering in the corner. A few days later, my real toddler was, who was 18 months old was having a tantrum and he flipped over the, his, his little table. That was when I realized he was a bad example to our son, and I could not allow that to happen. My husband is spoiled rotten, and I do not need that in my life. I want an adult man as a husband, not a little toddler. Belor, this is my book, The Naked Wife. It's on Amazon. Let me see if I get that link for you. My face is just itching. Oh, my gosh. Amazon. Let me get the link. Let's see how many um, 19 reviews. I got call. I got email Amazon because people say they're leaving reviews, but I don't see it. I'm still at 19. And I know I've sold more than 19 copies. Okay, here's the link from my book, The Naked Wife. Okay, let me read one more. Let me try to get to one hour and then I'm going to go. My husband is a teen. Let me get the one about the tantrum. Okay, my husband is a child. Stop marrying little boys. Ladies. Boaz, hello. Hi, welcome. I'm gonna read this and then that's gonna be it. And then I'm gonna run and wash my face again. My husband is a child. My husband loves to say that I treat and talk to him like a child and that I need to respect him because he is a grown man. He loves to tell me how the Bible says for me to submit to him. See, my husband is a male, but he ain't no man. <laughs> she said, her husband is a male, but he's not a man. There's a difference. That's why the Bible said he created them male and female. Created he them. Paul says, when I was a little child, I spoke as a little child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Okay. Let's see what the Bible says about being a man. Paul said, when I was a child, I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. A man provides for his family, and he, he doesn't have the job, and if he doesn't have the job he likes right now, he will do what he needs to do legally to provide. Boys stay home with their mamas. He hasn't been working for God knows how long now. He can't hold a steady job and won't get any training to get a, a career. Now, see, ladies, that didn't just start happening, okay? He didn't, he didn't all of a sudden can't hold a job, can't, don't want to get a training. That was happening before she married him. Red flags, ladies, red flags. He can't keep a job? You think he going to keep one when he get married? Okay? I always say, when you meet a man, you got to look at his whole life. What he his whole life is a testimony of what your life is going to be. His whole life is his resume, so you can see what he's done with his life, and you can see you can project your future. Okay, he ain't got no job. What you think is gonna happen? Okay, he can't hold a steady job. When did that start it to happen? He won't get training to get any career. Didn't y'all talk about that before you got married when you was dating? I begged my girlfriend to beg her husband to see if he could get, get um, my husband a job at the dock. He got, he got him the job, and my boy husband said it was too early. 
for him to get up and be down there by 5 a.m. Five is that behavior of a man or what? You have you mean to tell me you have you know why he's acting like that? Because he knows she got it. Ain't no man that have a uh let me tell you, my first job out of college was paying me seventeen thousand nine eight hundred and ninety two or something like that. I was so scared because when I was in school, I was I had a job at the school. I was so scared, y'all, that the first job I got offered, I took it. Well, it wasn't, the job wasn't that. When I got there, they said, oh, the position was filled. Lies. They only say that to pull us in. And so, but we have this other position for, I think it was 1700 So I, I was like, okay. I, yes. Because I have to take care of my baby. I had to put roof overhead and food on her table. Okay. I had time to frown, frown up, and I stayed there three years until I got this job that I've had, and I've been on this job for 13 years now. Okay, sometimes you just got to take what you can to put food on the table until better comes along. I must get up at 5 a.m. to be at work at 6, so the wife has to be get up at 5 to be at work at 6. Working two jobs, that's why he ain't working, because you're working two jobs. Why, he got, why you think he's going to go to work? You're working two or three jobs to put food on your table. Working two jobs to put a roof over our heads and food on my children's table. I asked him to make sure he get get the boys up by seven so that they leave the house by eight fifteen to get to school around the corner by eight thirty. But he can't get up to do that. Oh child, just throw him away. Throw him away. Okay, just throw him away. <laughs> Thank God for my mama who comes by every morning on her way to work to wake them up and drop them off. Is that the behavior of a man or a boy? A boy. I have asked him that since he is home and I'm working two jobs, if he could clean up, cook, and wash. You mean he ain't doing nothing? Oh, sorry, guys. Oof. He said he ain't doing that because that's a woman's job. Lord, I will kick his get out. Out. Get out. Woman's job. So I told him, that's, a, that's, so I told him since that's a woman's job, I will quit my two jobs so I can stay home and do women's work. Is that the behavior of a man or a boy? Then I asked him to help with the boys with their homework. So when I get home, it's already done. But instead he half does it. So then I had to, you know, cause she keeps solving all the problems. Hello, welcome. I'm sorry. Allergies. My face is just itching and I wash my face because of the allergies. He had to get a tutor to come to the house every evening to help the boys with their homework. Is that the behavior of a boy? Man? Listen, he didn't become a little boy when she married him. He was always a little boy. She just thought she could change him. When it was back to school time, I brought the kids to buy sneakers. He wanted, he went and picked up a pair of three hundred pair dollar sneakers, and when we got to the cashier, I only paid for the kids. You know what he did? Had a tantrum. I was so embarrassed, and he yelled, "That's our money! Our!" I asked, "It's our money when you go and work for it. Remember, you couldn't get up that early, so you don't have any money." That's right, girl. Is that the head, the behavior of man or boy? Therefore, since he acts like my brother, like my brother used to act when we were kids, I guess that makes me his mama. Yes, it does. And if he's one of the boys who who are eight and ten, but are more men than their daddy, so he wants me to stop treating him like a kid. Fine, grow up and be a man. If he wants me to respect him, he needs to earn it. Respect is earned, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's earned. So much for getting with a br brother down on his luck with a little bit of potential. Never, ladies, never get with a man uh, down on his luck. Never, 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 never. Don't do it. Okay, with a little bit of potential. Okay, unless he's in medical school about to graduate with his doctorate degree. Okay, that's all the potential we're going to look at. All this, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, we go, uh-uh, 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 I need to see it, I need to see it. So, my wife, the naked wife, somebody send it to Aisha Curry, please. But I really think 
Um, I hope this speak to her husband and I hope this speak to a lot of wives husbands, because a lot of husband, I, I'm reading some of the wives group. There was like anybody who don't crave some male attention is lying. I don't. I, I raise my hand to the Lord. I don't. I didn't care for it when I was single because I knew what they wanted. And I don't care for it now when I'm married because my husband give it all to me. Okay. Okay. If I call my husband, he's up there sleeping right now. If I call him, if I say, Michael, he's getting up and he's running down here. See about me. Okay. Anything I want, anything I need. Okay. You see how I'm looking crazy right now? I've got my hair done a week ago. My hair is a mess. I'm going to have to wash it out. He's still telling me how pretty I am. Baby, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. Come cuddle up with me. I was like, my God, my God, sneeze it. <laughs> He's like, you look cute, sneeze it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You know, a husband is to love ladies, single ladies dating. Make sure he loves you and he adores you. I asked my husband, I said, well, how come all these pretty girls around here, you ain't married? He said, he said, um, he said, you're like, you're, you're pretty. You're he said, you're sexy like Janet. You know, he loved Janet Jackson, that's his girlfriend. He said, you're sexy like Janet. He said when he was looking for a wife, he, he wasn't looking for one of the Kardashian. He said he didn't have to be like Condoleezza Rice. You know, Condoleezza Rice is like real smart. She's like brilliant. He said, you have to be like a Michelle. My husband loves smart women. He always tell me how smart I am because we met at a networking event where I was selling my first book, Praying for Our Children. Where is it? I'm going to do a reprint on it. Praying for Our Children. I don't have it here. I have to make sure I have my book here. I want y'all to buy these books. Um, so he always tell me I'm smart to this day. He tells me, he said, he said, you're like, you're like Condoleezza and you're like Michelle. You're smart. And he said, you're sexy like Janet, but he said, you're, but you're also like Mary Poppins. He said, you're a good mama. He said, when I was looking, he said, that's what I was looking for. Ladies, that's why you can't try to be what he want. If you're not what a man want, walk away. My husband was in his 40s, never married, no kids. He was looking for Janet, Condoleezza, and Michelle, and Mary Poppins, all mixed up in one. And of course, he, finds, he found it in me. <laughs> okay. So a husband is to adore her. Adore his wife, treasure her. Read the Proverbs 31 woman. People people holler and cry about what she does for him. But do you see what the but it says his heart safely trusts in her? He trusts her. He is known in the gates. Back then, the elders would sit in the gates. He is known in the gates. Because of how well he takes care of her. But you know why? Do you know why the Proverbs 31 woman is the Proverbs 31 woman? Because of her husband. She could not be the Proverbs 31 woman without her husband. Okay? So they cry about all that she does, but they don't look at what her husband does. No, 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 no. She is the Proverbs 31 woman because of her husband. She is because of him. Okay, I always tell my daddy, my spiritual father, Bishop Rasha, I say, I am because of you. If it wasn't for that man, I would be out here in these streets acting and being crazy. Even though I always had a steady head on my shoulder, but hey, I got pregnant at 16, so it wasn't that steady. Okay. So women, we need that, that male love and attention, even if it's a father, an uncle who loves you for you. My dad always said it's important for a woman when you're dating to have a man in your life that loves you. Okay, so when this man you're dating, he needs to know you have a man in your life that loves you and that appreciates you and that treasures you. you. Excuse me. You know what my husband, my dad told my husband? 
at the altar. It's on our wedding video. He said, I have a 1969 shotgun. <laughs> I will use it. And the pastor repeated it. He said, oh, did you hear what this father said? He said he got a 1969 shotgun and he will use it. That's why he told my husband. He told my husband. He said, if you ever decide you're going to beat her, cheat on her, abuse her and Lexi and misuse her and not do right by them, call me and I'll come pick them up. My dad also told him, he said, Janice is gifted. She has a calling on her life. Make sure you give her the time she needs to perfect her gift. And so my husband, he stays on me more than how I stay on myself to make sure I write. I have written. I don't know how many books I've written since I've in six years of marriage, but he stays on me. He'll say, I'm going to keep the baby. You go right. Did you write today? Don't worry about the house. Leave the house. Make sure you write. Make sure you spend time with your writing. I don't want you to go telling Bishop Bradshaw, I don't make you, I don't give you time to write. <laughs> Why? He knows that my father loves me and adores me. If he ever act crazy, my little, my little Michael is coming in. You're done? Okay. Do you, okay. Do you want to come say hi to the ladies before I go? I'm just getting ready to come off. <laughs> Did you take your shirt off and put it on? Why is your shirt on backwards? Mm -hmm. Say hi. Hi. <sighs> This is little Michael. Say hi, little Michael. Hi. Say, I look just like my daddy. I just like daddy. <laughs> I just like daddy. Oh. All right, come on, it's time to go. Give me my allergy pills. No, that's my no. allergy. No, no, my allergy pills. Some mommy, some mommy and Lexi allergy. What about me? You don't have You have Zyrtec upstairs. Daddy, mommy, trust mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. It is daddy, mommy, and Sheffield. Mm -hmm. You have Zyrtec upstairs. Dr. Oh, gave oh, Zyrtec. Yeah. This is from mommy and Lexi, but let little Michael and, dad. and daddy and little Michael has Zyrtec upstairs. Can you find it, please? I'm going to find it, but you didn't want it, remember? I like it. <laughs> I want it. Okay. All right, I'm coming to give you some Zyrtec, okay? okay? All right, what is Daddy doing? Oh, he's watching TV. All right, guys, I'm going to go. So remember, single ladies, make sure the man you marry, make sure he's adoring you. Michael, Michael, mommy's talking. Mike, make sure he adores you more than you adore him. Mm -mm, because if you don't, you will end up like the side. No, she's craving the attention of other men. You know, all right. I'm gonna go. I love you guys. Leave your comments in here. Remember my YouTube channel. I have lots of ew, Michael. You put your phone in my mouth with the syrup. Remember my YouTube Sorry, channel. Mom. Okay, babes. Remember my YouTube channel. Church girls want to get married too. I have lots of videos on here. Um, <sighs> Michael, go get me some wipes. Did you syrup on my mouth? It's all right, baby. Don't worry about it. Can you hand me the wipes? Wait, let me get a video. Um, who's been asking me about Hannah's story? Hannah's story is there. Uh, Frosty, have you guys listened to Frosty? I know Danielle has. Michael, give that to me. Frosty, Frosty has snow bites. Frost is Frosty has snow bites. Listen to this one too. Frosty has snow bites. Frost bites. Snow bites. Frost bites. Yep, all everything all sick child. He just came here, threw his fork down on my mouth with the syrup. He didn't want he wanted waffles for dinner. Okay. All right, guys. Make sure I'm on YouTube. Go on YouTube, watch some of my videos and share. I love you guys. I'm gonna upload this one to YouTube too. So 
because I haven't done anything this week and it's showing in my numbers and I need those numbers to go. Okay, love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>